Welcome back to a fresh new weekend here racing at Los Angeles Racecourse. I'm your host, Jose Contreras, back from a little uh, weekend vacation. And Michael, good to see your face. Good to hear your voice. I'm just gone a weekend and I've got to retune myself. I feel like I, I got to make sure where all my buttons are at. But how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Jose. You'll be fresh and chomping at the bit, no doubt, for this big weekend coming up with the Pick 6 carryover. I got to give a big salute to Mr. Ed Burgard. He came uh, off the bullpen to fill in for me. He did a great job, as always. I'm sure the fans appreciate him uh, hearing his voice and seeing his face there on TVG. And I got to thank him because he left me a Pick 6 carryover in excess of $90,000. That's a lot of money to look at for Saturday night. It certainly is. It was great to have Ed on track and uh, to bend an elbow with him after the races each night. Always great to catch up with Mr. Burgart. But uh, we've got a lot to look forward to heading into this weekend. When I was perusing the Saturday night fields when they first came out Wednesday night, Jose, uh, the name Marcelo jumped off the page yes. when I saw him in race seven, one of the excellent, uh, exciting uh, debut performances by a two-year-old earlier in the season. And I thought, well, he'll be the most interesting horse running on the program. And then I got to race 10 and there's golden boys yes. staring at me. And what a race it is. The feature, the Sergeant Pepper feature. Golly, there's some good horses at double figure odds. Uh, that's because of the presence of the brilliant golden boy. First out since the El Primero Del Año Derby. As a matter of fact, he and... Marcelo pretty much have identical layoffs. They've both been off uh, within a week mm -hmm. of each other, about five months. Yeah, and a, a quickie glance at that Sergeant Pepper feature since we're talking about it. we got a, some time here. This is a tremendous field. 350 yards, great way to complete the pick six. The special one, three-race win streak. Uh, one Jenny and Quartel, three-race win streak. Off points bulletin, a winner of the Oklahoma Derby at Remington Park coming in for the hot connections of Mont Monte Rosa and Armando Cervantes. Nevada Charles. Eye in the Sky, who's kind of always been teasing uh, that signs of brilliance that he once showed as a two-year-old. Always for Juan Alamán, up the ladder, who was well bet in that gents list. Uh, La Beverly Hills, who was caught by the impressive Nymphette. And then there's Golden Boy, 7-5 on Ed Burger's mind. Ed Burger's morning line comes out of the win in the El Primero. So he's going to be one of the stronger favorites uh, in that pick-six sequence. Yes, it's a full field. It's a deep field, but such is the outstanding resume of Golden Boy that, that he's a dominant favourite on the morning line. But uh, with him and Marcelo lining up on Saturday night as part of a pick six carryover, it's going to be a very exciting card. It is. All right. So you have a selection for us in race number nine, which is the start of the lead double part of the pick six as well. And uh, what do you want to talk about here in race number nine? This is a 330-yard maiden claimer, and the morning line favourite is number two faster than fire. My preference in the race at the value is number one fussy, and they come out of the same race on July 16. I thought we might even show the race twice, I say, yeah. and uh, focus on each of the performances. The favourite faster than fire finished fourth in a blanket finish. He was drawn one from the outside. He's number eight. Blue silks with a white cap. And he's off slowly, gets a mild bump, but then closes into this blanket photo finish. Faster than fire was, uh, what, 8-1 to one this night. You can see there a little bit of a, a bump there after breaking slowly. Ends up kind of surging there. And it's going to look visually good for this effort. But sometimes horses tend to kind of follow the runners on the outside. Maybe it was, maybe it was the 8 really finding the best ride. But that start is the most concerning part about that faster than fire. Yeah, he was stretching out well, and uh, he finished fourth beaten ahead. It was a blanket finish. But now let's watch the same race, looking at number four, Fussy, who's in post position three because the two was scratched. But it's horse four, gold with a red cap. Uh, the horse had to alter course after beginning slowly. And then as you see the race unfold, about halfway through, Fussy is on level terms with Faster Than Fire, and gets completely shut out. Watch this horse have to put on the brakes. You can tell completely lost room there and was finishing visually just as good, if not better than faster than fire. 
Well, I have no doubt that with a clear passage, Fussy would have made it a five-way win photo. Yep. No question that Fussy should have been right up there with all of those other noses on the wire. So that leads me to wonder why Fussy is four to one on the morning line and faster than fire is eight to five. I don't get it, particularly when you consider that in that race we just showed you, faster than fire went off at eight to one. Fussy was seven to two, four to one. So no, Fussy was shorter odds last time, much longer odds this time, but there was at least as much merit in Fussy's performance in my opinion, in that July 16 race. And then you look at the fact that Faster Than Fire has had 14 tries and is still trying to break the maiden, whereas Fussy has only raced four times. So to me, this just jumps out as a big disparity that perhaps we can exploit, take advantage of in the pick six. I think Fussy is a great investment at four to one. I'm buying what you're selling because I also prefer Fussy over Faster Than Fire. You can see those two are going to be drawn side by side. The 9 to 5 second choice of the morning will be Yellow Eagle, who returns from Sacramento. Uh, he was a maiden facing winners in that allowance. He's got gate speed, which is something that both the 1 and the 2 don't really have. So Yes, that's a good it, point. And so that's where the 5 might be able to kind of have a little bit of an advantage. But if we're just comparing the 1 and the 2, I'm with you. I prefer Fuzzy there, 4 to 1. Yeah, I'll grant you that both the one and the two need to get out of the gate more efficiently if they're going to break their maiden. Um, and Yellow Eagle is a decent alternative for sure. But the fact of the matter is that Faster Than Fire is the morning line favourite. And as such, I think he's vulnerable. And that just that uh, one race comparison is enough for me to think that four to one fussy is an overlay. Faster than fire will get around to winning a race eventually, I'm sure, and maybe it'll be Saturday night, but not carrying mine, thank you. I, uh, I'd, I'd rather the four-to-one fussy. Uh, Professor G handled the, the duties there as navigating to the previous show last week. Uh, any recap about the picks? Anybody scored nicely, or was it a, a forgettable week? Um, I, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, forgettable. There's, there's, forget the, there's the race called a short-term memory uh, again <laughs> for you. Um, <laughs> mate. No idea. There we go. I'll, ha I'll have to review. I'll have to review and catch up with Professor G, see how we did on the show last week. But good luck with I, pre I presume if I picked a winner, I'd remember it, so I probably didn't. But. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, good to see your face. Good to hear your voice. And best of luck with Fuzzy. Nice pick six there on Saturday night. Okay. Cheers. Get ready for a huge weekend of racing at Los Alamitos on Saturday night. The action will feature a pick six carryover of more than $91,000. It's one of our biggest carryovers of the year, and the payout could be huge. On Sunday night, Los Alamitos will host the running of the Grade 1 Go Man Go Handicap, led by many of Quarter Horse Racing's biggest stars. The best of Quarter Horse Racing is always at Los Alamitos. Don't forget our $91,000 carryover on Saturday night. Burns Ranch Stallions are strong in major stakes. Favorite Cartel signed seven grade one qualifiers in a single weekend. DKAA will go two for two, defeating Abel the Nickel Jet. Walk Through Fire also sired an Edberg finalist. He and Separate Interest each qualified two for the Los Alamitos Oaks. Burns Ranch also stands Fly Through the Fire, Mental Error, Foose, and MP Shining. Let Burns Ranch help you plan your racing future. Well, Chris, good to uh, have you back here. And it was a difficult card because nobody had six out of six in the pick six on Sunday night. Hey, Shaker took the claiming futurity. There was a lot of shakes in that futurity as expected to. I believe it was a, what, 19-way shake for the winner? Yeah, 19-way shake. And uh, he won handily and uh, had a nice payday with that with that and the claim. For Terry Thompson Company, uh, he won nicely and uh, promoted, put up a pick six carryover at over $91,000 this up upcoming Saturday night. All right, so we're going to talk about Saturday night's card, and we lead it off talking about the Futurity because the horse that you're going to focus in was ex was supposed to be in the Futurity, but because in the Futurity you were entered for a claiming tag, some connections could opt out of racing in the, in the final and say, you know what, we don't want to lose our horse. And this is a horse that kind of went through that scenario this year. Yeah, he sure did. This horse was a... Uh... Uh, was a was a solid worker prior to uh, the debut, where he had all kinds of trouble. Ran third with over two lengths of trouble, and when coming back in the, in the claiming stakes trials, this horse was uh, a five to two shot, and we were uh, both uh, 
rather uh, lucky to get a price on him. We both liked him a lot, and he won yeah. rather handily with a good amount of run left to give. And uh, Felix Gonzalez uh, scratches the horse to go here, so don't take a chance of losing the horse, which he probably would have without a doubt. But this horse earned a solid figure. He would have been one of my top selections in the claiming uh, futurity final. Yeah, so we're talking about just a coming ride for Felix Gonzalez. He's a two-horse here. Felix Gonzalez did the same move last year with, uh, I forget the horse's name, something Angel, Angel something. Uh, a horse that he scratched out of the final. He ended up qualifying to the PCQHRA uh, Futurity. But let's focus on Jessica Cumber right in that replay. We're going to show you the trial on July 31st, uh, the, the trials for the Los Angeles Claiming uh, Futurity, where he was the three horse. Yeah, he was the three horse. He won a five to two. And he, like you mentioned, he had a, a pretty visually impressive third first time out. And what did you see in this race on July 31st? He got a little fractious, uh, broke a little slow and brushed and skied away from the gate. Lost about a half a length, maybe a little bit more, but put forth a big run uh, midway down the lane brush right there. Uh, lost about three quarters of a length, so just some decent speed. Asked a little bit midway, put forth a big run uh, past the gap and was striding out very strongly. He's a nice size runner, wants more distance, will definitely improve. Third lifetime start coming up here this weekend. Look how much run that horse had to give. and had a good amount of a gallop out right there under a hole into the clubhouse turn. So this horse has a good amount of ability, will steadily improve. It's still in front and pulls it away around that clubhouse turn. Very impressive gallop out. But this horse steadily improved with Felix Gonzalez and uh, has a big look against this allowance competition at 5-1 to one on the program to be a big contender and a nice prize. Yeah, this is uh he's gonna be in gate number two on Saturday night. So he first time out he was gate six in a field of eight, gate three in a field of eight, uh second time out in that uh, maiden win, and then gate two in that field of uh of a seven, excuse me, of eight runners as well on Saturday night. Mar Marcelo was one of the most impressive baby winners earlier this season. He's been off since April. I think that's the main question for him, right? Yeah, he's been away for 140 nights. Has returned with a nice little set, of, nice little workout here recently. But a very impressive off of the debut, and with expected improvement, he's got a big look in this race as well. Challenger is going to take money for he Taylor Jose Nicasio, uh, you know, tight big three there uh, last time out. It looks like those three are going to dominate the wagering there. Just to come a ride and the one BGK Firefly for Jose Flores, who competed in the French game two starts ago. But I like the improvement on just to come a ride. Uh, definitely one of the contenders in race number seven, part of that pick six sequence. Yeah, Chris. pick six sequence, $91,000 uh, plus carry was going to be a monstrous pool. It got yeah. some wide open races, so everybody get your handicapping caps on. It's going to be a monstrous pool. I'm looking, I don't know, maybe 300 and something along those lines. It's going to be a big, big pool and a very exciting way to kick off the weekend here at Los Alamitos with some quality races and that big uh, carryover. Yeah, it's going to be a nice, uh, nice ice pool for sure. Saturday night races, uh, you know, the last six races on the card, which races five through ten. All right, so Chris likes just to come a ride in race number seven, part of the pick six. Chris, thanks so much for that selection. I'll catch you out there this weekend at Los Alamitos. Get ready for a huge weekend of racing at Los Alamitos on Saturday night. The action will feature a pick six carryover of more than $91,000. It's one of our biggest carryovers of the year, and the payout could be huge. On Sunday night, Los Alamitos will host the running of the Grade 1 Go Man Go Handicap, led by many of Quarter Horse Racing's biggest stars. The best of Quarter Horse Racing is always at Los Alamitos. Don't forget our $91,000 carryover on Saturday night. Well, I'm back off a little bit of a layoff, Professor G, and you left me with 91,000 in the pick six pool. Is that correct? Nobody hit the pick six. Nobody hit the pick six on Saturday. We had a $24,000 carryover going into Sunday. And once again, nobody hit it on Sunday night. So here we are, Jose, after uh, your nice little freshener there. We come back, and what do you get? $91,000 pick six carryover. 
We treat you good here at Los Al. That's just what I need to get back even. I'm down about 91,000. Uh, but no, uh, tremendous job, Ed Bogart. Thank you for coming in, filling in, and coming off the bullpen, uh, throwing strikes right down the middle, having a good night. I'm pretty sure it was a fun night for uh, people at around the racetrack to see Ed Bergart live on site. And uh, I was just looking at, at I don't know if, if you knew, but when that one, that big one to five favorite was defeated, was there a carryover already set uh, after no. that, or was it still tickets alive? Yeah, there was several tickets alive. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe there was eight tickets alive going into uh, the the second to last race. Okay, several ho- uh, four horses had two tickets each. Obviously, there was a winner in that one, and uh, in the final leg. Only uh, better beware, and I and I can't remember the other horse. Uh, this eight and nine, I believe it was. It was two mm. horses that had one ticket each. Uh, both of them, as a matter of fact, Dr. Red Allred uh, owned horses uh, going into the final leg, and it was Hay Shaker who won the claiming futurity. So, boom, there you go. We have a carryover. That's it. Easy as that. Congrats to Hay Shaker getting the job done in the Los Amigos claiming futurity. And again. Tell us a little bit about the action in the in the claiming box, Professor. I saw some uh, some very good action over there by the claim box. Yeah, it was a record. Uh, last year we had about thirty four claims. We did better than that uh, mm-hmm. as far as the claiming uh, action that was going on. I think it was a, a total of thirty nine claims put in. Hay Shaker had eighteen or nineteen uh, claims in there. Five horses ended up getting claimed out of the race. Of course, the winner, Hay Shaker. Uh, and I was talking to uh, Jaime Gomez, Carlos Lopez. Uh, last year, if you remember, Women's Secrets won the claiming yes. futurity last year. And, of course, lots of claims uh, on that horse. Well, this year, Hay Shaker wins the race for trainer Paul Jones, Terry Thompson, Robin Gordon. And uh, who gets the claim this time around? Jaime Gomez, Jaime Gomez. and Carlos Lopez. So uh, they, they got a horse back from uh, the claiming futurity. Last year, they uh, they lost the winner. This year, they pick up the winner. Yeah, so it was an eventful weekend there for sure. With those those of us claiming for charity, it's proven to be a popular, popular claim box there, as we saw last year and then again this year. And uh, I want to pick it up with race number seven. Christopher Wade gave us an, an analysis of the number two horse, just a common ride. We talked about how Venus Gonzalez took out, was it El Angel? Um, El Tio Angel, right? El Tio Angel. He took him out of the finals after winning a trial. He does the same thing with just a come ride. He took him out of the finals after winning a trial. He wants to keep this horse. So it's one to lose him. Uh, so he's, he deserves a, a shot here at five to one. I went through the race with Christopher Wade professor, but I wanted to dive in a little bit more about your thoughts about Marcelo. Marcelo was probably what he held the fastest time of by a two year old at two twenty for a, for a while, right? Early in the season. Yeah. It was the first one to break that uh, 12 second barrier, 220 yards. And I did it against Chick's first flash, Jose, a horse that comes back and wins the John Deere uh, juvenile handicap and qualified to the kindergarten futurity as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, so that was a big, big upset because Chick's first flash was coming in off of some really nice works. Marcelo comes back and uh, beats him with that really nice time. And we haven't seen Marcelo for a while uh, until he had a workout recently, August 9th. Goes a nice and easy 124 uh, met the horse. He's a very active horse, uh, very full of himself. Uh, and so it's interesting to see how the horse will do. Uh, Marcelo, trainer Santos Perez, EG High Desert Farms, they got a share of the Florentine handicap last year in an exciting dead heat finish with Astronomical, the same owner, trainer, and jockey uh, that got a share of the Florentine handicap with Letty Cartel. They team up here with number seven, Marcelo. I think the horse... Uh, Gets a look here. It's a pretty solid field. Uh, Challenger is another horse in here mm-hmm. that looks pretty tough. Mahomes Magic. Uh, he was the uh, the morning line favorite against a field that included Price Fixer uh, recently. So there are some uh, pretty interesting names in this race. But uh, we'll take a look at Marcelo in here. I, I agree with Chris Wade. I like the two, just to comment as well. But uh, how about Santos Perez picking up his first Water Horse Stakes win? ever with uh, last week with Letty Cartel. Now he has a chance here to win this race with Marcelo. And he also has a horse, uh, La Beverly Hills, in the feature race tonight. One of the two fillies in the Sergeant Pepper mm-hmm. feature handicap. So I decided to stop by uh, trainer Santos Perez, uh, just get some of his thoughts uh, about these horses that uh, that, he's be, that he'll be saddling on Saturday 
and as well as his career. And we're here in the barn of trainer Santos Perez. And just last weekend, Santos, you picked up your first ever quarter horse stakes win with Letty Cartel. But let's start at the beginning, the beginning of your career. You were telling me that growing up in Zacatecas, you were, you were around horses and then coming here in the United States in the San Pedro area, working uh, next to your father. That's how you really got into horse racing. And of course, the love of horses has always been there. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I started riding for my dad. And um, <clears throat> I grew up in the, the rodeo business first, and then, uh, and then I got into training horses. So, so that's where I started. And you had some horses here at Los Alamitos as time went on. Uh, tell me about your early days uh, racing horses here at uh, Los Alamitos. Yes, uh, um, my trainer, uh, uh, Fidencio Jimenez, he would help me out. Yeah, I had a, I had a full-time job and uh, worked there for 26 plus years. So, but my thing was horses. So now I'm doing it full-time. Uh, and then once he uh, he uh, he left Los Alamitos, and I I decided to take my license, and uh, and here I am training since. And you've told me that you had uh, some big barns. You've had some big stables over the over the years. Uh, one particular night, you had nine horses running on the same night. Yeah. So it was, it was great. It was great back then. And now you're uh, here in the barn of. Uh, Enrique Gonzalez, E.G. High Desert Farms. Uh, last week, you saddled Leti Cartel to victory in the uh, Florentine Stakes. Tell me about that win because it was a special one for you. Um, for a while, I, I couldn't believe that uh, you know she was uh, for because uh, because of the odds. We thought we didn't have a shot, you know, like okay, or maybe a <laughs> second or a third, you know. But when, when I saw her battling it for first and second, it's like, whoa. And uh, the way she was stretching, uh, at that moment, like maybe 100 yards before the finish line, I'm like, boy. And the way she was stretching, uh, I think we got this one. That's, that, that went to my mind. But then, then again, I thought, well, wait a minute. The race is not over yet. And once we were, they, they, you know, it's like, we go either or, first or second, you know? And so we tied. So that was even better. And uh, well, thank you to Don Enrique to give me the opportunity to train these horses. And it's great. It's great. This Saturday, you have uh, La Beverly Hills going against some really good sophomores. Uh, Golden Boy uh, is one of them that stands out. Up the ladder, another one. There's a, a horse that's a stakes winner at Remington coming in. But here, La Beverly Hills, she's run some good races. How do you see her coming into this race? Well, we'll see. She's feeling good. And uh, we'll see what happens, you know. It's tough horses, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Another horse that's coming back to action, Marcelo. Uh, a two-year-old that won so impressive first time out. Uh, went 11 9 I think, first race that he ran. But we haven't seen him in a while. How is he coming back? Um, he's coming. He's working good. Yeah, I just worked him. And uh, on that work, well, he wasn't asked to, he was not asked to, you know, go a little faster. He, he was just holding them. And um, there was some, uh, you know, there was power left on him. And, and, and uh, I liked him, you know. I liked his work and he's strong. He's a good horse. Good to catch up and know more about Santos Perez. Not only did he, you mention he, he's got Marcelo now, he's got a lot of the runners here for EG High Desert Farm. So a lot of talented, well-bred horses in his barn, La Beverly Hills. But we're talking pick six carryover. He was part of that pick six carryover, right? Lady Cartel. That was the horse that kind of started one of these uh, this carryover. Well, it helped uh, launch the carryover for, from Saturday to Sunday, yeah. that $24,000 carryover. And of course, no one had it on uh, Sunday night. So, uh, you know, it's rolling on a uh, $91,000 carryover. It starts in race number five. Uh, first post for that race will be 8.43 p.m. Our first post on Saturday, 7.05 p.m. Race number eight, final pick three opportunity tonight. Quick glance at this race, Professor, because it looks like there's going to be, you know, the, the favorite from the rail, which is uh, Beat the Heat, uh, who shows some ability to begin his career. But what did your Professor Gene's notebook analysis thought about 
the two and the three. The two first time starters, I thought they both went well in 12:30, but no doubt that the breeding of the three kind of stands out, right? It does. We're talking about uh, that tremendous family uh, that every time that we see uh, the favorite cartel, remember me, Rose, we have to mention powerful favorite, mm -hmm. run for your life, bomb cyclone who qualified to the All American Derby last week, majority interest who's been a really nice yeah. Philly. Uh, Cyber Monday, a great one winner. So uh, this uh, this line just continues. And I thought Temple Court, uh, very solid work all around, Jose. Yeah, I thought I, I like the way both first time starters moved here. Extrovert and Temple Court. Extrovert is from uh, Miss Lujin, that third red mare that actually won going uh, eight, on seven. the turf at Del Mar and going 870 here over the night of Los Al. So they both look uh, good, Professor. And then compared to the experience of the one, who are you leaning with in this race? I think this is going to be one of those key races in the pick six. You know, I, I thought Beat the Heat looked pretty good. I was looking at Lady Dusty, the experience. Uh -huh. But the two workouts from Extrovert and Temple Court kind of uh, changed my mind a little bit. And I decided to go with the two Extrovert at the top, Jose, because Me too. just the way this horse finished that drill. And we're starting to see some of these fly through the fires that they got some octane power. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the farther they go, we've talked about Nymphed before and the way that this uh, Nymphed gallops out, we've seen watch out and uh, he's done really well in longer distances and extrovert number two, uh, pretty good acceleration right out of the gate, uh, pass her rival around the gap and just continue to pull away from the competition. And then I just thought that she was just absolutely full of run in that gallop out on that in that workout uh back on august 9th when she went 12.3 yeah and i i kind of saw uh that workout the same way you saw it i, I like the way that one was moving i like the the energy um and I, I thought there was a pretty good race there and just when i thought when my workouts were not loading professor i got them for you i got them since we're talking about them why don't we show them with visual evidence here and here we are this is going to be extrovert Fly to the fire, Miss Lujin, and she was on the inside, right, of the two team set. Yeah, she's on the inside against Wake Up America, 12-3 versus 12.8. So we'll, so we'll take a look at the inside and look at that acceleration just right away, just pulls away and just continues to draw off from the, uh, from the company and impressive through the finish line. And then just look, watch the way she doesn't want to stop, Jose. No. This is a very good work. You know, the quick acceleration out of the gate. I like that she was professional. She wasn't moving in or out. Uh, I, I just liked everything about the drill. You know, and she did it very, very nicely. I thought it was a, a very good workout for her. Yeah, and you have a, a horse fly through the fire that, you know, started, we're starting to see those babies deliver late. And you mix mix in with a really nice thoroughbred mare okay. in uh, Miss Lou Jean. Who uh, you know? Who's won at, at several different uh, distances and, and surfaces? So a pretty interesting prospect, extrovert. All right, and uh, I promise you one work. Why don't I promise you the second work? Uh, the other first time solder, uh, Temple Court. This is going to be August thirteenth. Uh, as I'm bringing them up here, I want to make sure I have the right one. It is August thirteenth, and Temple Court was a solo workout. Favorite cartel, Remory Rose. Plenty of Grade One sibling winning siblings. Uh, solo workout, but also broke fairly well. Yeah, super fast out of the gate. Nice acceleration. She does angle slightly to the inside uh, after the gap, but leveled out pretty quickly. Just continues impressively, continues striding really nicely past the wire uh, under a nice hand ride and a terrific gallop out as well. And uh, that's one of the things that I did notice about Marcelo that I wasn't too crazy about was if you look at the way this horse is striding compared to the way that Marcelo's striding at the at the finish line, you know, you much nicer stride yeah. uh, towards the end. But Santos Perez did mention that um, they're not they weren't asking too much from Marcelo in that drill, uh, and he felt the horse had plenty left. They felt they had they had plenty left. But just one of those things that when you look at workouts, just the way uh, uh, you know a runner striding, you know, kind of tells you a little bit as well. Yeah, so I, I did like both workouts for the first time starters. I think they're both very live in the spot, three to one and seventy-two, res seventy-two respectively. I do prefer the two just a little bit. She looked a little bit more professional coming out of the gate, but it's going to be a fun race. Race them right. 
the final pick three of the night, part of that pick six sequence. Quick glance at race number nine. We talked this race with uh, Mike Rona. He gave us a look at number one, Fuzzy, Professor. Uh, Fats of the Fire is eight to five. And then the, the five Yellow Eagles, nine to five. It looks like it's going to be bet like a three-horse race, right, on paper. You know, and I don't love anybody in this race. Uh, I kind of lean towards the, uh, the the favorite Yellow Eagle. I think just the consistency uh, from a level of consistency, Yellow Eagle, I think has been a little bit better. Uh, the the um, in one of the inside horses, the one that kind of intrigues me a little bit. Uh, you mentioned Fussy, uh, mm-hmm. Faster Than Fire as well. Uh, those kind of intrigue me. But again, I'm not in love with any of these horses, to be honest. No, we have a an 0 14, 0 for 14 maiden, the 8 to 5 more than favorite. That tells you what kind of race this is. Uh, it's going to be an interesting race in the pick six. A Yellow Eagle with a little bit more gate speed than others in that spot. Featured event, Sergeant Pepper feature handicap, 350 yards, $35,000. This is a classic group, Professor, a very good group. Uh, not only do we have back class of greatest stakes winners, but we also have recent allowance or stakes winners in very good form. There's a special one for Jaime Gomez, three race win streak. He handled Eye in the Sky fairly easily last time out. Yeah, we've always uh, been so high on Eye on the Sky, but the special one took care of him pretty uh, handily, uh, just led the entire way, ended up winning by uh, plenty, by plenty. And uh, this horse just keeps getting better and better. Jose, I was starting to think, man, this horse could be a candidate for a uh, most improved horse yes. for the meet, the way this horse uh, has performed, especially during this first part of the year. But um, how about this field, though? We got some horses that are coming in in really razor sharp form. There's the one, the special one, has won three in a row, one genuine cartel V, also on a three race win streak. And uh, I'm interested in this horse because the way this horse is finishing, um, I think the extra distance, uh, especially after his last two wins, you know, he's run at 350 yards before and has shown that he can uh, continue strongly. And uh, I think this horse will really like that 350 yard race, uh, even though he's 20 to one. Wow. I like that. I like that. Uh, then you're going against all points bulletin a horse that's coming in out of town after winning a, a derby in Oklahoma after yeah. running nice in a, in a great, I think that uh, Oaks, uh, might be one of the richest uh, female races uh, in the country. Of course, we have the Oaks, the big Oaks here at Los Al, the All American Oaks. Uh, but that's a nice, um, nice amount of money up there in Remington. Uh, I believe that's got to be the richest uh, race for Phillies. And of course, Golden Boy, three three wins in a row as well. So we have several horses on nice win streaks. Professor, me and you, we've been riding with the ship, chasing yeah. eye on the sky. Race after race after race. It's a pick six on Scary Over Professor. Do we chase once again or do we let Eye in the Sky beat us? Beat me. <laughs> beat me. <laughs> I'm going to say the same thing. And he's probably, we probably put him in the winner circle now, to Professor. Yeah. Uh, but with pick sixes, you got to take stands somewhere along the line because it gets expensive with that $2 denomination, right? Yeah, uh, Eye in the true. Sky, I just I didn't see a lot of excuses. He ran a solid second to the special one. Uh, but maybe second time off linkers here improve, but um, I, I think I'm going to pass tonight. Um, always yeah. there for Juan Alleman returning from Grants Pass. This was a, a very competitive allowance type back at Los Al earlier in the season. Up the ladder, who was actually 5-2 against the special one and Eye in the Sky. He took plenty of money in that common event in the Gens list. La Beverly Hills, we just talked to Santos Perez. I mean, he got caught by an impressive effect, so no no shame in finishing second in Absolutely, that Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's Golden Boy. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Eye on the Sky. I mean, the last the comments from uh, George Duarte, solid effort, second best, yes. and clean trip, out yeah. finish. Mm-hmm. So both of those races, the horse like you mentioned, he's done, he's run fine. He's run fine. We just, you know, just hasn't delivered that win. So when you have the caliber of horses here like Golden Boy, um, okay, you know, we got to take a look at him. And he's coming off of a nice break, but he has done, Nothing wrong so far. Uh, just continues to just win, win, win. Six wins from eight starts. Uh, he's a super classy horse. I remember how he took a significant amount of time off from October to March. You know, he got sick there, and, you know, he looked Im- impressive in that trial win. And that was no easy task to run down the very classy whisking glasses. Yeah. So 
give him a lot of credit because he had a significant amount amount of ground, a length back at first call. He was able to get up, so he defeated a very good horse. I do think 400 is his preferred distance, so 350 tonight might be a little short. But if he just breaks with them, I think he's he's a horse to beat. Yeah, there's just a lot of horses here that are just super sharp, uh, you know, probably at the top of their game. So I think one of those horses will continue to do that. Uh, Golden Boy won the Edberg Million Futurity last year. Whiskey Glasses won the Gold, excuse me, Golden Boy won the Edberg Million last year. Yeah. Whiskey Glasses won the Golden State Million Futurity last year. That's two out of the three million dollar races here at Los Alamitos. And when they got together, Golden Boy, like you mentioned, got the best of them late. And I think this horse can break better than that. Yes. So at 350, Golden Boy can certainly show that he uh, he can break fast. So uh, um, I think he's going to continue to roll uh, in, against a very, very good quality field. All right. Uh, and Slew runs out the field. And that sixth place finish was actually better than it looked uh, because he had a significant amount of trouble. And once he angled out to the outside, he still finished with some run. He's a he's a, victory, a derby winner in Arizona. So the 10 could run better from the outside post. But this is a very sharp group. Uh, Professor, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to single Golden Boy in the pick six. I'm, 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 I'm not going to let my mind wander. I'm going to already tell you that Golden Boy will be my single in the pick six uh, on Saturday night. Very well, very well. I'm my big long shot, super long shot, super, super, super long shot special, the two. One, Jenny oh, There you go. It's going to surprise, surprise, uh, better than his odds. Might not beat Golden Boy, but I think this horse is going to run a nice race. All right. Uh, with Rodrigo picking up the mount because Jose Nicasio sticks with the special one who's in a sharp, sharp form. So we might be able to build a nice superfecta, a nice exact, a nice trifecta there. Keen, one genuine cartel B. So that's a feature of this, uh, the Sergeant Pepper feature, which is uh, going to be one, uh, one very good race there on paper on Saturday night to close out the pick six. But I'm looking at the calendar, Professor, behind me. And I'm seeing go man go handicap. Do you have any idea how many we might get in the in the entry box? I have. I've I've checked, and we're gonna. It looks like we're gonna get seven in the go man go handicap. And I'll tell you some of the names, right? All right. Give me some of the names. I'm gonna start with Cattell Cove. Okay. Decent stakes winner. He was ultra game behind. Uh, um, uh, what was it? A uh, Open up Adam. and Adam, yeah, Open Adam. Mm -hmm. So Open Adam's also in there. Ah, uh, there we go. Spencer Childers, like of course, uh, Circle City is going to be in there. Uh, let me tell you, who else should I tell you? How about Flashback? Oh, he's back. Flashback is back. The Super nice. Derby winner from last year, coming back, actually from uh, Oklahoma Remington mm -hmm. Park Championship, and uh, and of course we got to mention. The big boy so far here at Los Al. Impress him. Impress him is in the go man go handicap. Uh, there's a couple of other other horses in there. Um, so it's going to be a nice group of seven going in the go man go this Sunday. Just with the names you mentioned, that's a stacked, stacked field. And uh, uh, looking forward to the go man go on Sunday night. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, the return of flashback to Los Lamitos, uh will be interesting as well. Um, Jaime Gomez, uh, did you have a chance to catch up with Jaime Gomez talking about his uh, his big weekend here, Los I sure did. I sure did. And uh, we gave us an update on Flashback, how the horse is doing, what he's been up to. So here it is, the uh, reigning Coro Horse leading trainer, Jaime Gomez. Here with one of the great Coro Horse trainers of all time here at Los Alamitos, champion trainer last year, Jaime Gomez. And Jaime, we got the Go Man Go Handicap coming up this Sunday. And the Super Derby winner, Flashback, returns to action in a, what should be a super exciting race. How do you see Flashback coming in? Uh, we haven't seen him in a few months, Jaime. Well, the horse, uh, we sent it to Oklahoma for the championship, and he ran, he ran fair over there. You know, he don't have too much time. He come back, the horse I worked in three times. The horse doing really good right now. He's in his top shape, so... We want to try to do a good performance. And he's always done his best running here at Los Alamitos, he so that has to 
uh, make you happy. We've seen what he can do at 400 yards, especially during the second half of races. That's kind of what you're banking on, huh? To see a big, big second half of a race. I like to see him draw a good outside number, and uh, he got he got to break good to compete with those kind of horses. You know, because he really slow on the bottom, but that horse is charging and the in really, really good. You mentioned that you've sent them out to the track a couple of times. Has the uh, kind of focal point been to try to get him f out of the gate faster, or is it just to keep strengthening his strength, which is those big finishes? Well, you know, he got to break faster. And, you know, and that, you know, he that, that horse, if he get a good break, you know, we get a good race. And uh, that's what we hope, get a good good hole and, good, and a good break. If I don't, if you don't mind talking a little bit about the team, the Jaime Gomez team, like I mentioned at the beginning, you're the reigning champion quarter horse trainer, and as we know, it takes a good team, right? Yes, take a good team all the time. We got a, my compadre Lopez here helped me a lot all the time. Carlos Nacho, Lopez. The grooms. We got a really good groom. Jorge, good, good groom. Everybody's happy. Uh, a team that has been together with you for a long time. A long time. I got those guys for a long time. Thanks so much for the time. Looking forward to a big Sunday here at Los Alamitos. The Goma and Go flashback and, of course, Jaime Gomez here keeping an eye on everything. Thank you, Orlando. Jaime Gomez uh, has been uh, uh, had a good role in 2021. He's got plenty of classy runners for 2022, and he's got contenders both on Saturday and Sunday night yep. there, and a flashback returning to Los Alamitos where he's done uh, plenty of good races as well. Is a good thing to see. Uh, any idea about post positions just yet, Professor? Or no, just just not uh, yet. Okay. Not yet. Um, you know, and it's been a. I haven't checked in the in the last hour or so. Uh, last time I checked, yep, seven were in there. We mentioned some of the ones that uh that I know are going, uh, and uh, hoping for a nice ten race card uh, to uh, close out the weekend here at Los Alamitos. And of course, when you got the names of Impressum, Flashback, Open Adam, Cattail Cove. Circle City, a couple of more in there. Should be a great go, Mango. Thank you for that, Professor. And that's going to wrap up August for us. We'll be looking towards PC Creature Derby trials and Futurity trials. And before we know it, we'll be talking Los Amigos Equine. So, right, Professor? Is the catalog live at Los Amigos Equine? .com? It's on our website. Uh, there you can check that out. Uh, there's a couple of other places. Uh, QHA also just had a, a tweet that I saw that it's also available through a link. So if you uh, if you use Twitter, go to AQHA Racing. They can uh, they have a link right there. But of course, you can go to Los Alamitos Equine Cell and uh, check out all the horses there. Uh, I believe it's 250 uh, head of horses going in the uh, in the sale. And of course, that's October 1st and 2nd. And we'll be talking a lot more about the sale in the weeks to come, Jose. All right, thank you, Professor. I'm going to pick your marketing mind right now. What is your expected number for the pick six? What do you think? Well, I've been uh, been putting on the ads uh, over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars total pool. Okay. Total pool. Um, but talking to a few, they're they're saying that I'm shooting low, uh, which that's great. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, I'm three hundred thousand total. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking three hundred thousand is going to be the magic number somewhere around there. So, okay, so I'm right over two fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you set a good line. You set a good over under. I think that's a good. Good line. So I think hopefully, uh, for for the sake of it, it goes past the the two fifty and closer to the three hundred. But it's, it should be a great pool. Uh, when was the last time we had such a large carryover? We we probably had one in the seventies, right? Yeah, we've had one in the seventies. We've had a few around the fifties. Uh, we, so uh, with the ten thousand uh, dollar addition that we do on Sundays, you know, if we get a two day carryover. That next Saturday uh, carryover is always going to be really juicy. And uh, so it's just part of the added bonus of doing this promotion on Sundays that uh, if we carry it over, you know, again after a uh, after a, uh, no one hitting it on Sunday, yeah. mm -hmm. we're going to have a good a good pool on Saturday night. Yeah, and it, that's, it, it was a perfect storm there as uh, it was brewing for both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, Professor, thank you so much for that info and the interviews. Best of luck this uh, this Saturday with a carrier for thank everybody you. tuning in. Uh, what time is our post time for the first race? 7.05 7 7 on 5. Saturday night. And the pick six expose, approximate post time is going to be at 8.44 p.m. on Saturday night. So get those handicapping hats on and 
best of luck to everybody getting involved. Professor, thank you so much. I'll see you this Saturday out there at Los Angeles. Thank you so much, and good to see you back.